Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to Super Fun Sunday. So first things first, I'm going to do a few announcements before I start this. This is going to be my last YouTube video for a few months. Uh, I'm going to take a break and um, focus on my work. Uh, I just honestly, it's not even um, a choice that is uh, like, I'm just too busy. There's not enough hours in the day for me to actually do everything that I need to do. Um, I wish days were like 40 hours and it would be no problem, but they're not. <laughs> I just see the day fly by. It's like, it's already six o'clock. It's already seven o'clock. Um, so yeah, but I'll, I'll be back probably in December is my goal. And, uh, I may stockpile some videos, but with that said, uh, Patreon is, is still going to go full force. <laughs> uh, that's a funny wrestling uh, reference. Um, <laughs> Uh, so I'll still be uploading probably three to four, uh, videos a week up there. What I try to do is I try to do one educational drawing video, one inking video, one sort of like check out someone's art video and then like a random, um, other thing. So it's, it's still a very, very, well, I mean, honestly, it's an incredible environment because you can go in for a dollar and get access to probably close to 250 videos. So, um, I also do private reviews, uh, for 20 bucks and for $50, I'll actually do a full on like hour lesson where I really go over your stuff. Um, but the, the $20, um, review is, I actually think we're really, um, it's it's a great opportunity for people to get um, a, a, an overview of what exactly I see in their work. But anyway, so Raphael Grandpa, he's actually going to be working with Frank Miller, and um, he he's a really really cool artist. It's kind of Paul Pope meets like I don't even know like like um, Frank Quietly. Uh, I mean, he's his own person, but. Uh, I wanted to, to at least do a video of someone more contemporary. I always feel like I'm grabbing stuff that's older. So uh, this actually did come out in, I think, 2008, though. Um, so uh, let's check this out, though. It's pretty badass. And uh, I was going to do this through my um, trade, but I could not get into my storage today. I actually grabbed some musical equipment for a friend of mine, and uh, it's slammed right now. So there's, I, it would be really difficult for me to get in and actually grab stuff. This is really nice. Almost has like a little bit of an Aaron Horky vibe, if you know uh, Aaron Horky's work. But man, this guy is really good. So this is written and drawn by Raphael Grandpa. And uh, yeah, that's going to be badass. I'll have links to his uh, social media and also um, Dark Horse so that if you want to pick this up or, or uh, support his work, please do. I always find it fascinating that that it, uh, a lot of times, oh, that's really cool. Um, storytellers tend to have different aesthetics than people that draw sort of the pretty stuff. And generally speaking, um, it's a smaller demographic that that do really really good storytelling and actually draw um, like pretty people. I don't know why that is. It's an interesting thing, but you know, I mean, these are like some pretty hardcore looking cats, and it's not that they're. Um, unattractive but you know what i'm saying it's like they don't look like supermodels um it seemed like people really enjoyed the jeff darrow video last week i thought i thought it was really good and, and really interesting this is really cool he picks great shots um and like man this just moves you right into this panel it's so nicely done the colors are actually really cool too for um how simple they are yeah, this is really But just goes to show, if you go through my super fun Sundays and storyteller spotlights, how many different varieties of art and storytelling you can do in comics. I mean, it really is, um, it's incredible and it's exciting too because of today's environment where, you know, you can build up a following online and do whatever you want on your own. Um, and so kind of like with the music industry where it's like before to make it, you know, you needed to be part of a record label. Um, you know, now it's just not the case. I'm going to be curious to see if this color palette shifts. It would be an interesting storytelling thing. I've, I've considered doing stories like this where you, you move through color, color moods, but we'll see. Yeah, this is a rough crowd. <laughs> 
was interesting so a friend of mine sent me a link to the um the frank miller uh preview of the dark knight story that they're doing together and when i first saw it i really was actually confused of who it was there was a splash page and then i think an interior and uh I saw the splash page first. And I was looking at it on my phone, and I was like, "Who is this? Is this Frank Quietly?" Uh, and this stuff does like is a little more um, rough. Like the he's he's nuanced his stuff a bit more. Man, that's so great! Really interesting um, structure of this guy's head. Um, this is all really nice. This guy is so good. It's nice fists. Really, really cool. It's a cool angle. And it's well drawn. It can be that can be a little tricky. Oh gosh. Yeah, this is really good. Really good. We should take bets right now. Will the color palette shift for people that haven't seen it? <laughs> oh man. And you know, honestly, it's incredible. That someone, well, again, he is really, really good. There's no two ways about it. But, but, uh, you know, this guy did his own thing. It's very different and and more rough than a lot of things that you might see out there. And now he's working with Frank Miller on Dark Knight. I mean, I, I think it's a pretty incredible environment. Even if you want to go the um, more traditional route, that that there are opportunities for people that want to do something different, and you can get rewarded for it. Um, you know, doing stuff like that. So again, as an artist, I think that we have more opportunities because you can carve out your own path and, uh, you know, he could do that Frank Miller book and then go on and do his own thing. And he's going to have so many more eyes on him, you know? Oh, a little different color coming in. <laughs> we'll see. Is it going to shift? Oh man, that's great. Again, this is a very, very nice fist. This is kind of more of an easier hand to draw. Stuff like this isn't so hard, but when you start getting in weird angles with fists like this, it can get can get tricky. They can they can look good in your rough, and when you start to refine it, you can lose it a little bit. It's nice. You know, but the thing is is just shoot a little photo reference if you need to, you know, to come compare what your hand is doing, and uh, that'll help. This is really cool. It reminds me of that. Uh, I'll never remember the name of the game right now, but uh, it was a game that came out about a year ago that they did this. What is it called? Like, I'll, I'll, like I said, I won't remember. It. Um, it's a pretty cool look. Oh, Bottlehead, maybe something like that. I'm amazed sometimes at the shit that I remember when I do these videos. Because honestly, like, uh, is on it as you might think that I am at times. I am, honestly, I consider myself pretty clueless. Uh, so, uh, I even kind of trip out on, uh, like the random stuff that I'll remember. I don't think the game is called Bottlehead, but it's like Cuphead. That was it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, I've never played it. I've, I haven't really followed it that much, but man, this is great. That's a really cool pose. The shift of the body is great. Cause he's, he's really leaning over here. This is a nice fist too. I'm, I'm like, I'm very focused on his fists. <laughs> That's very frank, quietly, quite frankly. <laughs> I can feel that he's rushing a little bit here. This stuff looks a little tiny bit like he had to get moving. And when again, this is uh, it's crazy to think that this was drawn 11 years ago if the date was right on it. I think it said 2008. Um, he, I'm sure he's a much better penciler now. It's hard to say how, how much experience he had had when he, he had done this. This may actually be his very first comic, which, if that's the case, it's very accomplished. This is really nice. Great storytelling choices here. This is fun. We, and there's another book of his, so if we get a second, maybe we'll go through it too. I, I don't know if it was a short story or what it was, but... um. Man, this is crazy. <laughs> the boots and little pants. Yeah, there's a little tiny bit of a like Paul Pope sort of vibe going off this stuff. This it's funny. This looks like the 
that John Lovett's reviewer character a little bit to me. I know it's probably just a coincidence. This is really cool. Man, nah, that's nice. Oh man, it's brutal. But yeah, I wanted to thank all my patrons, um, patrons, uh, because uh, without you guys, honestly, YouTube probably would have slipped through the cracks even sooner. But um, I, I kind of, I, I consider them both equals, um, and so you know, the my Patreon support makes me step up to the plate. Wow, that's great. Um, to do the YouTube videos also. So again, thank you for your support. I try not to promote a lot on these videos, so it's one of those things that these are really cool. Um, so a lot of times I don't uh, express my appreciation, um, but I also don't promote. <laughs> this is really cool. Great angle for the shoe. And he did it right. This looks like the right foot for this. Some people put the arch in the wrong spot and then it looks weird like the foot's backwards. It's a little bit of an artistic pet peeve for me when I see people that do that. I don't know why it is. It must be some blind spot that a lot of artists have. The side of your foot, the outside of your foot and the inside are not really the same shape. And uh, Man, this is great storytelling right here. These are really great sequences. It's incredible that he was able to keep it so consistent with this color palette, and it it uh, it seems to work. It's funny. It's like when you almost see this color, although it's a little bit down here, um, it stands out quite a bit. Man, this would take a long time to do. It would be really time consuming. This is great. This looks like a stat. I'm not going to get into it now. Bonus features. Rizzo, nice. Oh, this is cool. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's nice. Man, this guy's got a great style. Those nice sketches. Very cool. It's 2006. Man, that was a long time ago. Holy cow. <laughs> Whoa, what happened there? <laughs> It's funny that he left that in there. I would have actually just statted in another drawing, but I guess uh, maybe I'm missing it. Maybe there's a reason, and I don't see it right now. The second that's really cool. I love this kind of stuff. I, I think like it's cool when books have this in the back. It's really interesting. Oh, this is a nice bonus section. Wow, that's really cool. Oh man. Yeah, he's great. And. So Dark Horse Comics, uh, to pull this up. So this is Strange Tales 2. It's going to have um, a few different pencilers, but what we'll do is we're just going to focus on the Raphael Grandpa stuff. Man, this cover is awesome. It's really, really cool to see him do some some familiar faces in his style. I think that's just really, really kick-ass. And uh, the inside looked good, too. I saw a page or two, and, uh, man, I was impressed. So this is a little bit of a different coloring style in this. It almost has a little bit of like a cell animation kind of vibe, um, which looks really cool. That it's it's a little like blurry, um, kind of like if you look just at the colors. Um, I actually think it looks really cool on his stuff. Uh, but yeah, that is a great cover. Man, that is so nice, and it's so weird looking. But this should encourage people that don't have traditionally, quote unquote, pretty styles that. It's all right. Like think of Scotty Young or or whoever you want to think of that that does something different, but still draws well. That's the thing is you still need to draw well and you need to be able to tell clear stories. So this isn't him, but uh, again, we're just gonna focus on his stuff. So look at this. I think this is him. Yeah, this is him. Man, that's so kick ass. 
It almost has a little bit of a Frank Turan vibe, if you know who that is. God dang, this guy's so good. And this is probably from a few years ago, too. I, I don't know why, but I thought I saw 2013 on this, possibly. Maybe not, but... um. You know, if if you Google the Frank Miller Dark Knight stuff, you'll see what I'm talking about. There's a couple of preview pages. He's gotten even more detailed and tight. Um, I think it's going to be incredible, honestly. Honestly. Oh man, that's so cool. Wow. Yeah, this is really impressive. We'll see at the end of the story if it credits it. I'm curious of who colored this. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, this is wild. It's interesting because it's hard to tell based on um, these scans because they look like they have been turned into bitmaps or it could be pixelated because of the digital files. But uh, th there are brushes and stuff like that in photoshop and in manga studio that can kind of get this sort of look i would assume he did this traditionally but it looks a little digital to me honestly looking at it like and I, but i i would only be guessing of what it actually was but uh yeah i mean there's some brushes that actually get that effect so man it's wild look at that that is so cool That's really interesting. He's the guy that doesn't get fussy with his panel borders. I always end up cleaning him up because uh, generally I don't work on stuff that's this gritty. Um, but uh, yeah, you know what I mean? You can have like stray lines going through the panel borders. Usually at the end, I'll clean all that stuff up. But it's part of the charm of this, these styles. This is really good. This is really cool. Yeah, that's really cool too. Bam! Wow. Man, that's so awesome. Okay, we'll move through this stuff fast. Like I said, I want to just focus on his work. Here we go. <laughs> We're just focused on Grandpa. Let's go. Come on, guys. <laughs> I wonder if he only did it in the first story. No, this looks like him. Oh, maybe not. Uh, no. Is this corn fusing? All right. Wow, what is going on with this art? Some of this stuff is pretty, pretty crazy. Wow, this looks cool. Man, that's actually really neat. <laughs> it's like sidebar. Oh, that's from Busema. A, a lot of these shots are uh, homages. <laughs> Come on, more grandpa. All right, issue three. That better be grandpa in here. I'm gonna be mad. Maybe he only worked on that one story. Oh man, that was cool. Man, that's awesome. I remember seeing this online, I think. This guy's stuff is really cool. That is detailed. That's nice, though. Great work. Wow. Yeah, this guy's cool. It's very cool. I, I like that Marvel is at least taking a risk with these artists and trying different things. Man, that is really great. Um, So I, I do respect that, although maybe not all the styles will appeal to me. The fact that the, um, there's um, a variety I, I do actually think is cool. All right, maybe that was all the grandpa. Bummer. Okay. All right. Well, I guess we're going to wrap it up. Oh, this is pretty cool. Oh, oh, Toby Cypress. Yeah, he's really good. This is nice. I like this. Yeah, this is cool. It's loose. Man, those are like sketches that he basically like refined just enough to get it in there. Man, that's great. So brave. That's a nice face. That's really cool, too. Man. <laughs> All right, 
So this might be the end. All right, I will see all of you in December. And again, it's, it's like if there was more time in the day or if I had more free time, I would do it. But uh, I just, I can't pencil, ink, and then work and do all the things that I need to do in a day and actually have more on my plate right now. It's just impossible. But, but uh, the goal is to have... Uh, video is done when I come back. So I'll be squeezing them in. So, all right, cool. I'll talk to y'all later. Have a good one and uh, we'll see you in a few months. Bye.